Hello again, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm welcome. I'm currently a full time medical student at the University of Obada. So, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing nine lessons or nine tips which will help you make and maintain a first class CGPA throughout your university days. This was my result in my first year. And if I know what I currently know now, then it would have been easier to make the same result or even a better result with least possible stress. So, in this video, I'm going to be telling you everything I was not told that would have made getting a first class way easier for me. Now, let's jump into the nine steps to have a first class CGPA and maintain it throughout university days. Step one is to know that good grade actually matters. I know you might have heard people, especially on social media, saying good grades don't matter or people with first class don't usually get a job and uh, first class don't make you successful, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. I can tell you from my own first hand experience and even from looking at people around me that good grades can open some opportunities for you. Actually, good grade is not all there is in university. Like during your university day, you should look to making meaningful relationship, building connections and learning marketable skills that will set you apart. But that still does not nullify the fact that good grades can open important doors for you. So if you are of the opinion that good grades don't matter, then you are probably not going to even put the extra work to get the good grades because it is easier to be an average student than to be an excellent student. Take that from me. Step number two is to start early. This is especially important to you if you are just beginning your university days, if you are just in your under level. I'll say you should take it as a marathon and not a sprint. Okay, I think it's best to tell you a story to um, emphasize this point. When I was in under level, I had roommates and actually my dream, my goals when I was getting into under level in UI was that the under level was going to be the last time I tried to pay my school fees because I wanted to get scholarships to, I mean, you know, put all my bills. And <laughs> I, I had those big additions then. Okay, so that was a good reason for me to actually pursue good grades. So first week of resumption, we had barely even started enough work. I was already going to the reading room to study. And my roommates then would taunt me that, guy, calm down now. Why are you reading so early? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, to so cut the long story short, after my under level, when we got to the under level, I got an apartment with one of my roommates and it was then he told me that he wish he had started studying when, like, he wish he had started studying like me when he was in under level. Because now 200 level was very, very serious. He was trying to get a first class CGP, but it was quite difficult for him. Though in his 200 level, his performance was way better than what he did in under level. He said he wish he had just put in the same effort he was putting in 200 level in under level. So it would have been easier for him to have that first class and maintain it. So I'm telling you right now, especially if you're in under level, start early. Even if anyone taunts you for studying too early, don't mind them. Especially if you want the good grade. Step number three is to learn from seniors. If I've seen any further, it is by standing on shoulders of giants. The point is, your seniors have been there, they've done it, they know your lecturers more than you do and there's just so much information they can give to you concerning each course you're going to be doing in the university and this information can be so valuable in helping you. When you're starting out in your under level or whatever level you are, make sure you meet a senior that is at least one year above you and ask them about each course, ask them about what material, about how the lecturer, you know, the preference of the lecturer. You can be very, very smart and not please the lecturer because you're not giving him or her what he or she wants. So make sure you talk to seniors and get all the necessary materials and necessary information about your lecturers and use them to your advantage. Number four is to know what your lecturer wants. It's just a continuation of the previous point. Your lecturers want different things from you. Make sure you know what exactly they want. And how do you know it? One of the ways to know it is by talking to seniors. Another way is by attending class. And if you're a person that don't like to attend class, make sure you always catch up with your friends that attend classes. During classes, your lecturer can actually give you a clue of, on what is going to come out in your exam, on things he expects you to know, on they can even recommend materials for you to study, which they're going to bring their questions from. So 
it's about being smart make sure you know what your lecturer actually wants from you number five is to study the right material in most schools or in ui for example the preference for studying material is first of all study your lecture notes or your lecture slides what your lecturer uses to teach you is the first material to study after which you look good for past question then supplement it using textbook or watching videos checking the slide will even help you know what to study in the textbook because textbook can contain a lot more information than, than is necessary for the course you are studying or for the particular course so when you check the slide you are going to use textbook to understand or to have a better understanding of that slide then practice past question in university you just tend to repeat past questions make sure you practice past questions and not just about um, repeating of past questions. Practicing past questions also help you assess yourself whether or not you understand the study material. So if you notice you don't understand it, it makes you go back to read it or help you use other supplementary materials. Step number six is tutorials might be helpful. There are always tutorials. I believe they are general tutorials. They are one that your um, fellowship is going to organize. Fellowship usually organize tutorials. Department organize tutorials. They are paid tutorials, they are free tutorials, they are tutorials everywhere in the university. So, you could try them out. If you notice they work for you, you could go. And if you notice they don't work for you, then you don't have to go. But tutorials can be helpful to some people. Number seven is to do it with friends. If you can have people that have similar ambition as you, as you do, it's going to just make the whole process more interesting. You are going to have accountability partners and you can actually form study groups. I would rather study group to tutorials myself. If you can find people of similar ambition as you, people that you can call friends, you can come together, discuss what you've learned, question each other on these things. Those periods are usually very fun. I, I, I do find those periods fun. Make friends with people that have similar ambition with you and do it with them. Like tell them, this semester I'm trying to get A in all of my courses. Let them tell you what they are trying to achieve. So and be accountable for each other. Step number eight is that you might have to do extra. For many of us that are not geniuses, like you just need to put in extra work to get this extra result. I would say for most people to pass in university is quite easy. For example, in UI, pass math is just for the five. Like once you get for the five, you pass. But to pass excellently can be quite tasking, can be quite demanding. So if you really want it, you have to put in this extra effort. It means you may have to cut down the fun time you spend. Like you can't you can't spend the same time having fun as someone that is okay with passing. You can't spend the same time sleeping as someone that wants to just pass. You know, there's there's also a limit to other activities you can engage in. You have to be more conscious with your time. You have to learn to manage your time properly. So if you want it just know that there are many times you have to sacrifice your fun time your sleep time you just have to put in extra effort so if you want it you gotta work for it lastly the ninth step is to have fun it is a very long thing the least years you're going to be spending in university is four years just imagine you know if it was something you are doing once like maybe it's an exam you're writing once and the period of preparation is just let's say one year you can just be brutal about the preparation even if you're not happy you can still you know manage but this is a four years like it's, it's a long time for you need to be unhappy and you, your university deal like i said before is not just about your grade so try to make this whole process fun make the journey fun and not just the destination because at the end of the day you might realize oh because of this first class I'm trying to pursue, I missed out on every other thing I can I could have gotten in university. I don't want that to be your own case. So while you are doing this, be nice to your people. Don't be the kind of guy that hides material from your friends. Or don't be the kind of guy that will not want to teach your classes so they will not score as much as you are going to score. During this process, learn, teach, have fun, like make the whole process fun and if after all your efforts, you realize that, oh, I still did not get the first class. It's, it's all right, too. So, but at this point, I think I also need to emphasize the fact that university is not just about good grades. You have, you have to make conscious effort to make good relationships. You have to make conscious effort 
to build connection and to learn skills. Please learn skills while you are in school. Because out there, beyond your grades, grades can open door, no, there's no doubt to that. But beyond your grades, it is your ability to solve the life problem that actually does matter. Like if you can solve problem in the real world, people are going to pay you for it. So that is the end of this video and thank you for watching if you are still watching to this point. I've taken a very long break from this YouTube thing and okay, this is a wake up call to get back to my weekly upload schedule. So you are going to see this by Tuesday and by next week Tuesday on feeling you are going to see another one. So my God, anyway, thank you for watching again and please like this video and subscribe.